people usually think I'm a little offensive. You know, everywhere I go, people warn me. They're like, Morgan, be careful. There's going to be kids there. Watch yourself. I'm like, well, I guess I won't whip out my dick and start pissing all over the walls. I guess I won't go masturbate in the children's bedroom. I don't know if I want to go to this party if I can't be myself. You know, I'm so offensive, I, like, I get beat up a lot. You know, people always threaten my life. People are like, Morgan, watch yourself. You say that again, I'm gonna beat you down like a red-headed stepchild. You know what it's like to get beat like a red-headed stepchild? I'm like, no. But I know what it is like to be beat like a Irish man's real child. It usually involves like some whiskey, an extension cord, and three days of awkwardness. So I had a friend uh, tell me he was into Buddhism recently. He told me he was a Buddhist. Well, that those weren't his exact words. Actually, his exact words was like, Yo, man, I'm really into Buddhism and shit lately. But it's hard to take him seriously because we were shoe shopping and he just bought $400 worth of shoes. And, you know, I'm not really a religious expert, but I'm pretty sure if you go out to the Himalayas, you won't find two Buddhist monks chilling together comparing shoes. Like, yo, Tenzin, did you check out my new SB Dunks? You know, I got them in maroon to match the robe, of course, looking fresh. You know, that's my least favorite part about religion is the misconceptions about religion. Like I met this Muslim guy recently and I use the word Muslim loosely because he was, a, he was a white guy that converted later in life. And that didn't really bother me too much because he did the whole praying five times a day and he abstained from pork and you know beer and stuff. But he stayed up one night doing speed balls, which is really confusing, you know. And in the morning, I offered him some eggs, and he's like, No, man, I'm not eating those eggs. You cook bacon in that pot. That's against my religion. I'm like, Oh, but uh, staying up all night doing cocaine, then easing yourself to sleep with a little heroin's cool? He's like, Yeah. He looked at me like I was an idiot. He's like, Yeah, how else am I supposed to fall asleep after a night of cocaine? I can't drink. It's against my religion. Ridiculous. You know, it's 2000. 2009. 2009 already, and there's still a lot of homophobia out there. You know? It's crazy. Even some of my best friends are homophobic. Like, I was going to a bar recently. Yeah. It was like kind of a newer bar, kind of scenester ish, you know, with a bunch of friends. And one of my friends didn't want to go. He was like, Last time I was there, I saw two guys making out in the corner. Which was like, So? You know? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but there could be two guys jerking each other off next to me in line to get a drink and the only thing I'd be worried about is if the bartender serves them first. Like, what the fuck do I gotta do? What the fuck do I gotta do to get a drink around here? Wear v-neck shit. You know, I know you probably can't tell at it by looking at me, but I used to be a little bit of a homophobic. You know, I got over it now, but I was so homophobic I didn't start masturbating until I was 18 because I thought touching penises was a little faggy. You know, but I got over that, I realized it's a skill, I should be proud of it, I'm good at it. So now you'll pretty much see me jerking off anyone. You'll see me on the street just pointing at people like, you, 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 there you go, enjoy yourself. You, 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 oh, enjoy yourself. Left-handed, ambidextrous, bitch. You know, I actually went to my first gay bar recently, you know, I'm pretty proud of that, I feel so liberal, you know. Actually, I was a little bit hesitant at first, but uh, there was a, bu a group of girls that invited me to come. They're like, yeah, just come, Morgan, just come, you know, you're pretty good looking, you might even get a drink bought for me. Right then, my eyes lit up. I'm like, all right, let's go. What should I wear, you know? I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I'm always an alcoholic over a homophobic. I don't care. You know? So I went. I was all excited. The whole night, I didn't get a single drink bought for me. It was depressing, you know? So I went the next day. I went to my gay friend to ask for advice. I was like, I realized I've never had a guy hit on me. And, you know, it's depressing. I want everyone to think I'm sexy. So I was like, you know, what do I need to do to get hit on by some gay guys? He's like, well, just clean yourself up a little bit, you know? <laughs> or maybe shower, shave, you know, and just loosen up a bit. You're a little bit uptight. So, you know, I took his advice to heart. The next weekend, I went there by myself. Same bar by myself. I was on a fucking solo mission. I had to get a drink bought for me. You know, so I showered, I shaved, you know, put on this exact outfit, actually. You know, I was looking fresh, I was fucking looking fresh. And I, uh, I roofied myself to get a little bit loose. You know? I don't really remember the night, but I'm pretty sure I got a drink bought for me. It was a good time. It was good times. I had a friend tell me that she thought she got date raped. She's like, oh, I don't remember anything from last night. I think I got roofied. 
And you know, I don't like to be mean, but I was just I just looked at her and I was like, Bitch, don't flatter yourself. No one would waste a roofie on you, okay? Just calm down. Maybe the only girl accepting drinks from the guy in the bar wearing sunglasses and a trench coat, but that's your own fault, okay? You know, don't blame it on anyone but yourself. Not that I think that uh, date rape is a funny subject. I've only had to use it once. Uh, but don't worry, don't worry, calm down. It was the first non-sexual use of all time. I, uh, I used it on my girlfriend. I just wanted a night off. It was great. You know? After she passed out, I just played video games all night and jerked off. It was a blast. It was great. So I'm single now. <laughs> single now is depressing because I realize I have no charm or charisma. So I gotta go on to Craigslist to find girls. <laughs> you know, and Craigslist is a blast. Have you ever gone on to casual encounters on Craigslist? A bunch of my friends showed me this recently. It was awesome. You can find any freaky shit on there that you desire, you know? There's women looking for men. There's uh, men looking for women. There's women looking for transvestites. There's pets looking for lesbians. It's crazy. <laughs> There's this one guy that wants to film someone have sex with his wife, you know? It's a good laugh. You guys should all check it out. After my friends left, I was like, oh, that was a good time. Got down to business. I was like, okay, women looking for men. What do we got? What do we got? Searching, searching. 300 pound amputee with uh, different sexually, pro sexually positioned prosthetic limbs. I was like, I don't even know how many there could be. There's like this. Maybe this? I, I don't know. Keep searching, keep searching, that's weird. Oh, sexy girl looking for one night stand, no commitment. I was like, alright, let's do this. I emailed her, you know, we set up a time. I was all excited. I told my roommates, he's like, you know, usually it's uh, just a guy setting it up for a joke to call you a fag. <laughs> oh, well, whatever, you know, I'll go down there and call him a loser for wasting all his time. And if it's not, I'll hook up with this girl and have my first first night stand ever, you know, one night stand, I've never had one of those, it'll be sick, you know, so I went down there, I was all excited, you know, sure enough, there was a guy there, called me a fag, I was like, oh, you loser, and, uh, you know, we chilled for a little bit, and then uh, we realized we didn't really have anything to do that night, so we went and caught a movie, <laughs> and then I fucked him while his wife uh, filmed it, <laughs> great times. <laughs> Have you ever had a condom expire on you? That is some embarrassing ass shit because I'm pretty sure that lasts longer than canned beans. It's non-perishable. It's embarrassing. You know, luckily I didn't have to find out the hard way though. You know, I had a roommate that uh, hooked up with this girl one night and he came up to me. He's like, oh, I need a condom. I need a condom. So, you know, I gave him one, you know, without thinking about it. Two weeks later, he come up to me all crying and shit. He's like, I got this random girl pregnant. I don't know what it is. I, I use a condom. Got me thinking for a little bit. I went and checked my condoms. I was like, oh, three months off. It's a good thing I noticed. That could have really ruined my life. Oh, good Lord. You know, so I got a, I got, actually, uh, you know, so I, I hate buying condoms, you know, so I wanted to buy some new condoms because my ones were expired, but I hate it. It's too embarrassing. So I, I search on the internet and apparently there's this thing for guys that's uh, it's kind of like the pill, but it's for guys and it's a diet. You know, I've been using it the last two weeks. It's just uh, Mantis, Mountain Dew, and menthol cigarettes. It's great, you know. It's actually seemed to work. I haven't ejaculated in the last two weeks. The air only comes out of my dick like... So I'm pretty sure it works. <laughs>